I think you're still not convinced. So I'll probably need to show you a bit more. So let's move on. I'm going to show you the sectional reinforcement command, which is a very powerful command, which you can use for a lot of different cases. So I'm going to start with the simpler cases and move on to the more complicated ones. So let us let me go in and select the command. It asks for any object. So I can select this column, for example. Then it asks for a point. So let me just select any point. Let me press the control key and select any point on that column. And the moment I do that, it takes a cross section of that selected element at that point. Now, each one of this is a potential rebar or uh, all of them put together or any combination can also be rebars. So if I want all of them, so let's say I want to make a stir up, which will go all around the column. I can, I can just leave everything selected right that and right click. And when I do that, it realizes that this is a closed loop. So it asks me for the point where you want the hook to be. So let me select this point. And then it says, okay, where do you want this to end? So I go up and I go towards the end of the column and I press my control key and I press enter again. And I want my last stirrup to be over here. And when I say right click, immediately with the defaults, obviously, the stirrups are created from that point to that point. Let's use the command again to understand it better. Let me go back to the re sectional reinforcement, select the column, select a point, like I said, anywhere, anywhere which is snappable. And now this time, instead of right clicking to tell it to make the complete loop, let me go and select this one, this one, and this one. I don't want to do the complete loop. I just want to do these three sides of the loop and then right click. And this time it doesn't ask me for the point where the hook will be because it's not a closed loop. It just asks me for the final point where I want uh, this bar to end. And this time, as you can see, it brings only the partial bar. And when I do right click, immediately my bars are created uh, with that shape, which was taken from that cross section. Now let's use it on an inclined column. So let's go back into the command, select the column, select a point at near the base. It creates the inclined uh, stirrup. I right click to show it the, where the hook will be. Then it asks for the final point. So I choose this one and I press right click and my stirrups are created at the incline like that. But what if I did not want them to be inclined? What if the, I did not want the stirrups to be like this, but I wanted them to go like that along the global Z direction, not inclined along with the column? What would I do in that case? So let me just press Control Z to undo. And I basically go back in there, back to the same command, go back to my sectional reinforcement, select the column. But as I'm selecting this point, I press the three key. Three, three, three. One is for X, two is for Y, and three is for Z. And three would tell it that I want the direction to be uh, along the three axis, which is the Z global or the current uh, work plane Z axis. So if I press three while selecting this point, it's going to take a cross section, but a uh, the outer unit normal of that cross section will be in the three direction of the local work plane. So I'm fine with that. Let me right click, show the point where uh, the hook will be. Go back in there, select this point while keeping three pressed once again. Right click, and this time it asks for uh, the, another section point. I don't want that. And this time, as you can see, now it has created the stirrups once again, but this time they are parallel to the ground. Now, in the examples I've shown so far, were, I have taken a section at two points and the bars have gone from point one to point two, but the shape of the bar has remained constant, whatever the direction may be. But what if we had a tapered column like this? In that case, what would happen? So if I go to my uh, sectional command once again, select my tapered column, select the first point, by pressing three because I want them in the global direction. Uh, right click to accept all and let's say put the hook at this point. And then I go up and select this point, press three and right click and right click again. Now, as you can see, uh, the, because of the column has been tapered and because the sections were different at this point and at this point, it has done an interpolation, a linear interpolation from that point to that point. And I've created uh, stirrups which vary in a tapered way. Let's move on to a slightly more complicated cross section, like maybe a retaining wall. 
and once again go go to my sectional command select that parent go and select any point uh, on that surface it immediately gives me the cross section at that point let's say i only want this bottom bar and i don't want the whole cross section i, I select the bottom bar and i press right click and then i go i have to go to another point at the end and it, it brings me the same bar and i just say right click to create those bars now we've created this single bar at the base of this retaining wall. What can we do with it? Let's double click on that and see that we have some embedment options for the start and some embedment options for the end. So if I say uh, put the end to the nearest surface and say apply, this little bar then gets embedded into the retaining wall up till what point? Up till the nearest point where it hits the concrete again. So it will automatically calculate how much I need to go. In this case, it's almost one meter. So when I choose this to nearest surface option, it will basically move in that direction. I can also say by embedment length. And what that is, I can give a multiple of the, of the diameter. In this case, the diameter is 10 millimeters. So if I say 30 feet and say apply, it's going to turn up and go about 300 millimeters, depending if that is your embedment length. So if I increase this one to 60 feet, for example, the bar will be moved further. What if I make it uh, 120 feet? What's going to happen then? Is it going to realize the shape of the retaining wall? Because like, as you can see, it, it went up and it hit, it hit a wall and then it had to turn and it turned inside towards uh, inside the concrete. If I make it 200, feet it's going to go further what if i make it 450 feet well it's going to go all the way and it's going to turn again so this is an amazing feature in which you can create a single bar inside some concrete and then ask it give it uh, any embedment length and it's basically going to start it's going to start turning uh, inside that um, inside that concrete let's put it back to none what i can also do is i can give it custom angles so if I give it a custom angle, then now if I this has a custom angle of 90 and 500. When I apply that, it says turn, what it tells it is to turn 90 degrees and go 500 millimeters. But with this one, I'm, I'm not restricted to staying in the concrete. I can just say uh, another 90 degrees. And this time uh, I can go another 500. Let's see what happens if I do that. So it turns outside. I can bring it back in if I want with a minus in there. And then I can actually turn it, if I say 45 degrees and another 500, I can make it turn upwards. Or if I do a minus 45 over there, I can make it turn downwards. So uh, with this kind of complete control over the end conditions, I can do the same, for, th same thing for the other end as well by using these variables over here. I can basically create any sort of bar I want after having uh, this after having created just one uh, base bar. Now, what if instead of creating the bar at the base uh, of this retaining wall, I had initially created a bar like this by selecting these two segments and then let it run across the retaining wall. If I double clicked on that, so this in the in the first one there was a single bar. Now I've I've created the initial bar which looks like this. Now in this case, if I were to give it um, an embedment length of 30 feet at this point, it's going gonna, it's gonna to turn into the concrete at that angle. If I give it to nearest surface for the other end, it's going to go and hit the bottom of the concrete. If I give it a bigger uh, embedment length of 120 feet, it's going to turn in, into the concrete once again. So as you can see, these are very, this is a very powerful command, which not only allows you to use the, uh, use the cross section to create your bar, uh, but then also extend the endpoints uh, into whatever embedment lengths which you might be needing. Now, let's make you a really advanced 3D rebar modeler. So you can go back home with the certificate. So let's go back to my sectional um, reinforcement command. I select this uh, strange looking structure. It could be anything. But the thing is that these are, uh, these are uh, complicated circular paths um, which have been created. And let me select that and let me take a section by pressing the three buttons so it goes in the positive z direction so i'll expect i'll um, accept the complete loop and give this point to be the hook point then i go to somewhere near the top press three press that accept it right click 
and my rebars are created on the screen. And as you know, what this command does is it, it takes the first cross section and it takes the last cross section and it does a linear interpolation between the two. But what I can do now is I can double click on this and inside, if you see over here, there's an option of take a section at every spacing, which means that at every bar spacing, I'm, I'm telling it to recalculate the section rather than doing a linear interpolation. So if I press that and I press OK, then lo and behold, there's magic on the screen. It just takes a section at every rebar from that complicated shape, whatever it may be, and it creates this uh, horrible looking rebar, which I don't recommend. But uh, what you would do in a realistic situation like this would be to actually have separate rebars on all four sides and there would be, um, there would be uh, like U-shaped bars on all sides. But just to show you the power of the command, I, I wanted to take you through this so that you can get your certificate of advanced rebar modeler. One final word about the sectional reinforcement command. We, up till now, we've been using it for one single object. We created a few objects, but let's say you've got multiple objects on your screen. This could be for whatever reason, you, that's, that's the way you've modeled your structure. And you, uh, you want to actually create a section from all of them. So what you can do is you can select all of them. All the, uh, they can be two, they can be three, they can be four, any number you want. And uh, before you enter the command, and then when you enter the command, it will union them temporarily and ask you for a point. So let me select a point over there, and it will create a cross section from the union shape of those n objects. So let me go ahead and select uh, these bars, for example, right like that. Right click. It asks me for the final point. So I have to select the formwork object again for the final point. Right. Let's say I show it this point, and I say right click. And immediately my bars are created from the section of that unioned object. So you have complete control over what you can do. You can even union objects together to create your rebars, and that's really better.